Hi, I'm Doug Marks with Metal Method Video Guitar Lessons. I am here today to answer a forum member's question. If you're not a member of our forum, you should be. It's a great online community of guitarists and we all try to help each other. Today, I will be helping out a member. I didn't write down his name, but here's his question. What is the best way to tune a guitar with a Floyd Rose bridge? As somebody who isn't overly experienced with guitar, I feel as though I may have made a mistake buying a guitar that has a Floyd Rose. Well, first off, I don't recommend beginners or even, um, I call them uh, beginner mediates in between beginner and intermediate. I, I do not recommend any kind of uh, vibrato bar bridge. Uh, it's fun, but the problem is, even if you're an experienced guitarist like me, um, there's a downside to the Floyd Rose, as you know, uh, and that is they're difficult to tune. Once you get them in tune, uh, they're pretty amazing. So I'll explain first some solutions to the problem and then how to actually get your guitar in tune. Let's start with a floating bridge. <laughs> Pretty cool, except for one thing. It's not in tune. But before we tune this floating bridge, my floating, I mean, notes go up and notes go down. Next, I will show you a block bridge. And with the block bridge, the notes only go down, but it solves the tuning problem. Very easy to tune. So. That's not gonna work, damn it. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so here is the block bridge. Goes down. Does it go up? And I'll show you why. There is a very small piece of wood glued between the body and the bridge. It's actually glued onto the body and it keeps you from being able to pull the vibrato bar sharp. It's easy to change strings. It's easy to tune the guitar. And there's even an advantage aside from that. Because the bridge is in contact with the body, you get incredible sustain with the guitar. Next solution, and this is the best solution of all, is called the Tremel No. This device costs about $50. You can affix it to the Floyd Rose without drilling any holes in your guitar. Uh, you're not screwing up your instrument. It can be removed at any time that you decide not to use it. And here's the great thing about it. These three screws right here, by using different combinations of them, one is a hard tail. The second way to use it is dive bomb only. And the third is completely floating. So this is by far the best solution. These are the fine tuners. You need as much adjustment in the fine tuners as possible. Screw each one of these fine tuners until they're right in the middle, not all the way down and not all the way up. You don't have to be perfect with this, but just make sure that they look like they're roughly centered. Unlock the nut. Okay, so the next thing that we do is a balanced tuning. Start in the middle of the guitar and work your way out like this. Third string. Fourth string. Get that in tune. Second string. Doesn't have to be perfect. And fifth string. First string. And then last, the sixth string. Begin on the third string, then the fourth, second, fifth, first, sixth. 
When you lock the nut, be sure not to tighten it too much. If you tighten it too much, you can end up um, stripping the screws and then the nut has to be replaced. That can be expensive. <laughs> The tuning problem with a floating bridge happens because as a single string is adjusted, it affects the tuning of all other strings. While practicing or performing, you might notice a single string slightly sharp or flat. As you adjust the tuning for that string, it throws the entire guitar out of pitch. Now you've got a problem that can eat up 20 minutes of your time. I created a system that compensates for this problem. If a string is a little sharp or flat, tune it exactly the opposite. For example, if it's 5 cents sharp, tune it 5 cents flat. Or if it's 10 cents flat, tune it 10 cents sharp. You don't need to be precise, just be close. Always tune a floating bridge by using the 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 6 method. You will seldom need to loosen the nut and tune with the tuning keys, the part of the procedure that I've already explained. Daily, you may find your guitar will need a slight adjustment. By using my compensation method, this should be a breeze. Now I'll demonstrate daily tuning for small tuning adjustments. This shouldn't take any longer than 60 seconds using my compensation trick. Starting over again at the third. Now. However sharp it is, I like to make it that flat. I will flatten it a bit. Then we'll go to the fourth. Fourth also a little sharp, so I will flatten it exactly as much. We will go to the second string. Also it's sharp, so we will flatten it the exact same amount that it was sharp. Fifth string, same thing. Okay. And that's just about right. Sixth string. Once again, the sixth string. Now I'll go back to what I hope is my final tuning. And one other thing that I didn't mention. As you're tuning, do not uh, place your hand on the bridge because you can actually make the strength go sharp. And Another thing that I should have said at the very beginning of this video, when you're tuning the third string, for example, I take my uh, fretting hand and mute all the other strings to make sure that only that one string is sounding. It's very important when you're using a digital tuner. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. We're in tune. If you have any other questions, I'm on the forum. Ask me the question. I'll do my best to answer it. If not on the forum, I might even shoot a video for you. Click here to download a PDF copy of my Floyd Rose tuning instructions. Everything that I've discussed in the video about tuning is included in this printable file. Click here to check out one of my free weekly lessons.